as far as protecting our bond rating, what? How much? Is there a percentage? Somebody told me five percent that we needed to make sure that, or, or just discuss that with me a moment as far as how others judge our bond rating, what we need to be mindful of. Uh, Lisa Gonzalez, uh, mm -hmm. I'm uh, legal counsel mm -hmm. of the controller's office. The uh, we uh, researched this question, asked the rating agencies uh, this issue many years ago, and they won't give us a percentage. It's kind of a, a comparable issue. It's it's a balance issue. The uh, it was one of the factors uh, in in the last uh, few years that uh, caused um, Moody's to uh, to look at our rating and it, it be a, a robust rating. And I'm talking about the statewide rating, not just the TRAN. The TRAN has mechanisms in place. It's a strong, it's a strong mechanism, so it's always rated the highest. We've always received the highest rating because there are protections in place, and we always pay it back. The uh, when you're looking at you, but you also have implications to the statewide rating, the general obligation rating, the issue that other other agencies pay. And so I can't answer your question in terms of a percentage, and we've tried to get that answer. The, it was one of the factors and the amounts in the, in, in the rainy day fund were, were a part of the factors in terms of the robust, robust nature of the economy in Texas. And so um, there's not just a single answer to that. It's the structure, it's the conservative nature of this body, it's the conservative nature of the estimates, it's the, uh, it's the tools you have in place already, uh, the tools in your toolbox. You know, you have inner fund borrowing, you have uh, budget execution, you have all these tools in place to react to emergency, and all those pieces are, are what help you as a state. So you're saying we're judged on many factors, not just one. Correct. But there's also a ballpark number in your mind of X billion that need to stay in the rainy day fund for, no? Well, it's, it's, we've gotten down to 8 million with an M multiple times and it has not affected our rating. We've gotten to zero, it's not affected our rating. So that's, okay, that's, so that's why I was saying it was important to take a look at when you get down to even zero depending on other things, they would like you to have money but it is not a single ticket item. That's why a number of times we've gotten to 8 million, not a B, 8M. Well, then I think, I think that's an important thing for us to talk about because there is um, kind of a body of knowledge that um, around this table that thinks to the contrary, that there is a number that we need to have in the economic stabilization fund. No, no ma'am, there's not, and because here, um, we've had great ratings, so it's just it's it's a question of lots of factors. Again, we are required by the Constitution to balance our budget, and the Feds are not, and we can't run deficits, and the Feds can, and so you read from some of the ratings that they sort of uh, rattle or saber and talk about what they might do about various countries, but they're not threatening the state of Texas. Right. So instead of X number protecting us by being in the rainy day fund, it's the tools in the toolbox and, and how we use them in our conservative philosophy that, that protects our bond rating. And again, it's the prudence that this body has always shown, and that's why I suggest that, that you really do look at your decisions today along with what it is you will be asked to do two years hence. And so it's really on a continuum that you look at both sessions. Just like last time you, uh, uh, well, John passed out the structure, and he taught the structural deficit. And that was why we felt like it was very important not to spend the rainy day fund then because we knew we had we knew today was coming, and it was going to be worse than two years ago. Right. We had that conversation. No we concern. definitely did. But it's different this time. Well, we're here. <laughs> Thank you.